Hi everybody, welcome to Fernsby. So today is kind of a continuation of last week. I have brought with me a bunch of dandelion seeds. I have a couple more bags. I've been collecting them throughout the last two weeks really. Um, whenever I stop somewhere driving and I see dandelions in seed, I'll go pick the heads and uh, save the wishes <laughs> before they get mowed over. Um, so that's a continuation of last week today. I'll be spreading all the dandelion seeds out. Um, the reason I'm spreading the dandelion seeds is because they're an indicator species, which means that they tell you what's going on in the soil. Dandelions specifically are calcium accumulators. They have a very deep taproot on them, like a carrot. And it goes deep down into the earth, reaches down into um, the mineral layer, and pulls those minerals up, and then carries those minerals throughout the plant in its leaves and its flowers and when they die back the other plants can then reach that calcium or other minerals that they normally can't reach because it's too deep for their roots they occupy a different space so dandelions in your own yard will do two things they tell you that your soil is low in calcium and also that it's very compact that's why you see dandelions growing in sidewalks because I mean, is there anything really more compact than concrete? So uh, what I'm doing, we have a lot of rocky soil. I'm spreading dandelions. They're great food for bees. As long as you don't spray them with pesticides, they are edible to you too. You'll even find dandelion greens in certain salad mixes. So they're a really good plant to have. They are considered a weed, but that's because they don't grow in rows. They spread around in circular patterns. So that's what I'm doing right now is spreading some seeds. We um, have been putting, you can see them over here, the elderberry field. We've been putting plastic bottles on all the flags marking the plants. And that's because every day when it's humid in the morning, the bottles collect that humidity and allows it to drip down to the plant. So every morning they're getting a little bit of water, which is helpful for new establishing plants. And also I think the sound that they make is keeping the deer out of them which is good we'll see as they grow if the deer start to get brave but right now i think the sound of the plastic makes them nervous and we're seeing deer signs and tracks around but not in the elderberry field which is good because we definitely don't want the deer eating them so next after i finish spreading the seeds we are going to get into the beehives and add um, some more supers and uh, foundations in there with a little bit of wax whatever we've got left basically from the bear eating everything last year and we're asking our bees now to draw so we will also be feeding so that they have enough wax um, they can make enough wax to draw out that foundation get that beautiful comb and we can start really getting to work on our honey season so we did that last week and we're gonna do it again this week so Stick around, I'll try and get some cool footage of the dandelions in the wind, and uh, yeah, see what happens. So this is a really rocky patch of soil up here on the hill, so I know my dandelions will like this, and so I'm gonna have more success by putting them up here. So I'm just gonna get a handful of seeds and just let them spread in the wind. I think this bag I actually collected on a day that uh, they were mowing. So I was trying to beat the landscapers to the seed heads. So if some of them come out in tight clumps, we'll just toss them out and that's fine. That's kind of it. What you can do for yourself in your own yard. Let's say, oh, hello. That's a big old black snake. <laughs> Anyway, we'll watch him, but what you can do for yourself is if you want dandelions in the yard or if you want to get rid of them, again, as a calcium accumulator, they're telling you that calcium is low in your area. So what you could do is when you eat eggs, especially since it's about Easter time and you probably have a lot of eggshells right now, go ahead and take those eggshells and uh, crush them up as fine as you can and then just sprinkle them around your yard. And then what you wanna do is get a garden fork 
and stick it in the dirt and then kind of wiggle it back and forth and don't you just kind of want to stick it in until it just cracks the soil like in the mud and uh, that will help your yard isn't that a cool snake <laughs> It is snake season. We try to wear snake-proof boots when we're out and about. Um, they are out here in force. I'm glad we could get this guy. That's really cool. That's a harmless variety of snake. Uh, likes to eat mice. So if you see one in your yard, you know, give them some space. Let them do their thing and they'll keep the mice away. Oh, Lombard's coming, so I better keep him away. I don't want him to go after the snake and harass him. Look what I found. One. Two. And three. I'm sure there are much more in here, but this is right next to Citrine. So we found some morels. And we're just gonna collect them. These are not the fake ones, these are the real ones. They're hollow on the inside. These are beautiful, nice and firm. Like a little, little squishy, but firm, you know? Yeah. That's gorgeous. Yep. So we found, move dog, watch out. There's one. We, these we found, I saw these three, and Brittany, Here's three. Here's one right here. Two. Two. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's our understanding that you want to get them like the day or two days after rain. Um, last year this time around Easter, that's when they start coming out and you might give them a little shake before you put it in the bag. Just Ideally, I would have a, uh, oh, like a laundry sack, kind of a mesh bag. That way, as we're walking and moving, there's a spider on that one over there. Oh, I see it. Um, as you're walking and moving, they'll drop their spores, and then you'll get more morels. Um, that would be ideal, but, you know, <laughs> we use what we have. This is exciting. So, yeah, tonight we're going to... Um, have some morels. They'll need really good, really cleaned really well. <laughs> that. No, nope. sorry. That's okay. And All right, so how to tell a morel? There, uh, from what we've been told from mushroom hunters, morels are a great mushroom to start with when you're out hunting mushrooms. There's two right there. He's um, Because there's really not a lot of mushrooms that look like them that can get you in trouble just the one yeah there is a false morel but it does look different and so between the morel and the false morel you're looking for this head that you've seen this like spongy head and then what you want to do is when you mm. this one right here is you want to um, make sure that it's got a hollow stem like that yep because the false morel will okay. have a um, closed okay. stem the so. fence is off, right? Yes, the fence is off. <laughs> so there. Look at that. That's so exciting. But yeah. Look at that. Look at that. That's quite the little sack. Look at Oh, man. <laughs> That's exciting. Pretty square? Yep. I gotta tell you. Quartz has a lot less drones than Citrine did. And the temperament of Citrine is a little bit nicer than Quartz. So I'm kind of hoping that we end up with Citrine's drones <laughs> mating with all the new queens this uh -huh. year. Alright, so feed box.
All right, everybody, thanks for joining us here at Fernsby today. Uh, we had a great time. It's such beautiful weather. I mean, it's hard to complain, even when you're doing hard work. Uh, what did we do today? Well, I planted some dandelion mm -hmm. seeds out in the field, <laughs> the park area. And we got into the beehives. We checked their drone brood population. Lots of drones. Lots of drones. Uh, we did find emerged drones in ruby, but mostly in citrine, we found drone brood. Yeah. So, um, kind of what we expected to find, over what we've been seeing over the last few weeks. And they are starting to dry out the comb and repair the comb that was damaged during the um, bear attack, bear incident. Yep, yep. And they'll continue to draw it out throughout the honey flow, the, the, the nectar flow during the honey season. So, I mean, we're just getting a head start, this really, on, on, the, on that. Yep. I feel like we did something else. We walked up and saw all the trail cam, well, changed out the SD cards on the trail cams. And... Saw a snake. Saw a snake. Yep. That was fun. Yep. Not a bad one. A good one. A good one of the snake. black snakes. Right. I think that's everything. Yep. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, follow along with us and uh, let us know what you like and what you don't like so that we can, you know, make content you enjoy. I know that... You know, we're doing what we do, so let us know what you want. <laughs> oh, the morels. Yeah, the morels. The morels were a big thing. Uh, so we will research some recipes on the way home. We've had some deep fried ones that were kind of like fried chicken, like in yeah, process. they were tasty. Um, they were tasty, and we'll see if that's the way we want to go or if we want to cook them a different way, but we'll try and share that with you. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's everything. Like, share, subscribe, comment below. Um, you know. Engagement always helps us, yep. so we appreciate it a yep. lot. We love you guys. Thanks. Have a good day.